Well, this lady needs absolutely no introduction whatsoever. Um, I'm a very big fan and glad to be having a chat with you today, Claire. Um, can you just tell me what you think about the facilities here at Farley? I think they're incredible. I mean, the, the indoor arena has got so much light and space, and then you go to the outdoor arena and they've got floodlights, and you can ride there till 10.30 at night. The yard has a really nice feel to it, both this courtyard and also the new stables that they've built that are, that are just to the side of the indoor school. But the thing that's just blown my mind away, right, I've just been into the riders' facilities. They've got lockers, they've got a shower, they've got Wi-Fi. So if you rode in the morning and you needed to, you know, have a conference or you needed to do a few emails and everything, you can sit and work here. So the whole thing is designed for people who work. Mm. And actually having that imagination and saying, what do they need? I think makes this different from anything I've ever seen before. I mean, I just went in there and I went, you're kidding me. <laughs> I mean, the locker is like a sort of five-star gym locker area. Yeah. It's really good. I think you said something really good before, that when you were unveiling the uh, plaque, that it makes horses more accessible. Now, if you yeah. can come here and you can quickly do your emails and then you can go and ride your horse yeah. and then you can have a shower and then go to the office, surely that is completely different. Exactly. I mean, because most of us have to make a choice. At some stage, you've got to make a choice between full-time work or having a horse. Mm. It's really difficult to do both. And that's me saying it, even from a, you know, a yard background where I could keep a horse or it could be kept for me at home. But I know it's impossible to do. I can't ride in the mornings and then do all the other things that, that I'm up to. But this makes it a possibility. Mm. And because they're on such a, you know, it's so quick into London from here or indeed working in Reading or wherever you've got, you know, it's a very, it's a very work friendly area. To make horses the heart of that, I think is genius. I really do. I'm so impressed with it. And they, they can go hacking for five miles without crossing your tracks. You, you, part, you go over a road twice, but basically you do, you're not coming back on yourself at all. Five miles. They've got 1,750 acres here. It's unbelievable. Uh, and I, I, know, don't know I might be moving in tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, Claire, but I used to um, put a little working hunter pole uh, with some oil drums when I was younger. Yeah. And that was my menage. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I went on and on at my dad about building a menage. Why not? Why not? And I don't think he ever saw the sense in it for racehorses, although actually a lot of trainers have them now. Um, I've taken photos and I'm going to take them home to show my brother and also the fencing. Have you seen the fencing? So every horse gets an individual paddock, but instead of it being post and rail fencing, which as we know is A, very expensive and B, hard to maintain because horses, you know, bite it. They've got um, solar powered electric fencing, but it's big, wide brown. It's called Centaur. I've never seen it before. It's expensive, but obviously once you've got it, it doesn't take any maintenance because they're not going to touch it. And it looks nice. You see, look at all the paddocks and it looks like you know post and rails that's the thing i think the the white tape can can look a bit tatty oh, and awful. with crib biting especially yeah. on some national hunt yards maybe this is the answer yeah exactly i think it just everything has been done to the highest level even little things so when you go around the boxes you'll see on this side they've got a swing out pole for your saddle just little things that, as you know, when you ride and you need to dump things quickly and you don't necessarily want to be putting your saddle on the floor, it's just great. And the horses are happy and relaxed. I do think it is the small things that matter. When you're looking your tack around, you've got your bridle over your shoulder, you've got your saddle, you don't want to put it on your door because the horse is going to pull it yeah, off. Exactly. So all the things that have been thought of, and yeah. maybe like you say about the menage with, with national hunt horses or flat horses, whatever, I still think w with the weather or being able to put some show jumps up, even with the national hunt horses, it's yeah. always good training. And maybe yards like this sort of Show inspire you. I think definitely and you and again looking at this yard it looks like it's been here for 200 years and yet it's brand new so all the roof tiling is perfect um, but the colors that have been chosen the way it's designed even the weather vane you know the clock tower that's a very traditional thing to do mm. and it's just really well sighted I, I think it's you know I'm basically, I'm going to move into there and I don't think I'll leave. <laughs> I think it's um, an OCD's <laughs> paradise, this place. If you have OCD, come to Farley Hall. <laughs> I think if you, just, if you just want to be able to not feel guilty about your riding and not, and not have it take away from the other things you do, have it enhance your life, which is what I think any involvement with horses can do. It's a great model. It's, you know, they won't have room for everybody who will want to do this, but it's a great model to base it on if you're trying to do it in a different area. Come and have a look at this place because they've got it spot on. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks so much for your time. I know you've got to whiz off for a book signing, but um, thank you very much.